They still want us to go back to to Clash Clash again. Hmm. Oh, make sure we're saved, just in case. I really don't want Kim to leave. So if I can get him to stick this out for me, we can finish this last conversation off, and then I can send him off? Alright, somebody was asking me what side coffee order I would like. It's interesting dealing with uh, when you're let's playing and stuff like that, how much everybody else in society has gotten used to being able to instantly communicate back and forth on phones via messages and so on. And uh, this is like one of the only things that you usually shouldn't do that in. <laughs> that in like surgery. <laughs> like so many people have jobs where they can just send a quick message on their phone. It doesn't interfere with the job at all. Um, but I've, but people trying to contact me, it's like I I'm I'm gonna be uncontactable for an hour starting now. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, cons consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. You sent us on a runaround. I know. She looks down for a moment, hiding her eyes behind her bangs. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for all this. For wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first between you two, then move on to questions. But I can't trust you. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. You will let her dictate the terms of your... Shh. I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> Why did you waste our time then? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. She looks at her feet. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. That's not a good enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. She reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay into the horizon, wine dark in the evening light. What lies beyond it? The Pale, the Mundi Isola, the Occident, and then Orange, the old, old world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? She nods. You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights the cigarette. What's going on? What's going on? What did you do? Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records officer, then they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir, if you file my name. Take me in for questioning. Enter me into the moral intern mill. There's a wince and a pained little smile. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This minor didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked? People after her? Moral intern people. This isn't orange cheese lit. What did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Rivashol. 
or even in Arantia. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. He taps his notebook. I need the names of the companies involved. And who hired you? The job was Lustuin County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the, the loose cap conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Luxat, Loose Cap, and their friends in the MI. He breathes out heavily. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Loose Cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The Cogobbler also includes the Bank of Consecra Consecration, Eierberg, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. Papa Lolo. Yeah, fucking Papa Lolo wants to kill me. She smiles. That's a lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get into... What I did to get into accounting. She shakes her head at the thought. A lot of people got hurt, she concludes. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. You said you studied Orange She's Lit. What's with this fugitive stuff? I did. I also had a side job selling insurance that I was really good at. Got picked up by a bank. Competitive intelligence, they called it. After that, I sort of... She smiles. Transitioned out of the whole culture scene. What happened here, the night he died? We were there. She points to the window. The silhouette of the bed is visible. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. Takes a deep breath. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. He breathes out. A moment's silence. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could... Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. She points to the window. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. The boots were all he was wearing then? Was he never wearing any of the armor ever? Well, not ever ever, but I mean like as a corpse. Or do they dress him up? There's a long pause. She just stands there, her arms at her sides. Then she continues. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. He's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Your cigarette, miss. Oh. He looks at it and quickly tosses the butt aside. I'm sorry this happened to you. So am I. She immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? 
It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. That's okay. He makes a note. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line. Plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off. Much more than usual. Titus said you look pretty high. Oh, yeah. She tilts her head. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room. Downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? She thinks. I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud? There is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. So it might have been very far away. Or silenced in some way, if that's even an option half the time. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. She looks down. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. She was having such a good time. She pauses. I sat down. And they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader of what? The Hardy Boys. We have her name, finally. I wonder if she's also... No, she's probably not the same woman we're looking for that's a driver. We have, like, three mystery women. Maybe four? Depending on how, which ones you're talking about. <laughs> the Hardy Boys, she says, as if it's self-evident. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, normally, yes. Ruby's the, o Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Okay, let's go on. What's, what then? Well, Ruby said, let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. That I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take, she'd take care of this. It's what she does. You know. Take care of things. I helped to get the body onto the uh, to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you. They were tampering with the body. So that's the thing. That's why so many of these motivations don't make sense and are so confusing. What is that from day one, we were led to believe this was all related to the union and the businesses and so on. Like, this is the guy that he's, he's the guard for someone that represents people the union are, are after, so they lynched him. So we're trying to figure out who they're going after and like, oh, these people are volunteering. That must mean that there is like a secret, super powerful leader that actually orchestrated this and these people are volunteering to take the heat off of that person because that's like how this whole place works. Everyone's got each other's backs and and so on. Uh, but it seems to have absolutely nothing to do with the entire union backdrop strike thing. It's completely- the lynching is not even- unless the, unless this is all not true to also. If it's, if it's all after her, then the entire lynching had nothing to do with the union. 
it was just people that happened to work in the union, uh, or be members of the union, but they were covering for someone who themselves wasn't even part of the union, but just kind of somebody that kind of became part of the fold of the relate of the community. So it is a, t a case of like small town looking after its own, doing it's a doing it, taking things into its own hands and so on, but not the. Not the small town justice that you're used to hearing about, which tends to be more, uh, distressing. This is just, there was a body and they wanted to clean it up for somebody that would have gotten in trouble if we followed up after it correctly. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see where this could go. Because, like, in some narratives, this could be the end of the entire story. This could be the end of the game. Or this could be where it opens up to something else and goes in a whole other direction. I guess we'll see. They were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging. Because they specifically set him, like, until the lynching was actually ready to be done, they were specifically hanging him in the shower to make sure that his, like, as he, as the body died, it was going to show the signs that a body would have if it had been hanging from death. Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this? 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what it does. She looks at the ground, then raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what'd you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Laylee in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. This Ruby, where where is this Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy boys. the people after you have killed him. That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. What happened didn't have anything to do with me? Wait, does she- so now she thinks that it, it didn't have anything to do with her and the people she's running from? His death? I'm only getting more questions, aren't I? <laughs> but maybe it did? I just don't know. She shakes her head. I don't know anything. We can't go after loose crap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. Or I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. If there's one thing I know, it's that you'll get nothing from there. Did you kill Laylee? What? She gathers the last veggies of her strength. Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. The wind picks up. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me, I know that. But I would never hurt him. He never would have died if not for you, but the death didn't have anything to do with you? What? Whatever happened didn't have anything to do with me. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. This seems like these seem like contradictory statements to me.
Downstairs, people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm sad to hear that. They must have said it. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one has implicated me. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape, she says. I told you before that wasn't what happened. True, sire. Triz two. Triz. Triz two. <laughs> Tis true. I don't believe you, drama. We're past that. But I'm just, I'm just covering my bases here. It'd be more reasonable to press every button and try to get and elicit re responses from her, if my uh, senses weren't also compromised. Because if, if if I could rely on them to pick up on lies, then probing her for, with with questions that are potentially stupid, like "Did you kill him?" after everything that's been said, could still potentially lead to certain reactions by knocking her off center. But that only works on characters normally that aren't her, because she specifically defeats my senses. I guess it's because of her espionage background, or just that he's in love with her or something. I'm 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 figuring that either Harry's infatuated with her, and that's why this is happening, or it's because. Uh, her espionage experience and that she's just very good at giving people the wrong cues. Okay, I'd like, to a I'd like you to answer some other questions, miss. Like what? She waits, her light brown eyes wandering over the floor, over your face. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. What is an indicator of truth? Which is an indicator of truth. I don't think so. Why did you do it? You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call. And he kept rotting. And they kept picked. And they, and they picked his clothes off. And that little fucker threw stones at him. So this is Kuno's fault. <laughs> Just so we're clear. <laughs> this is all Kuno's fault. Not everything. There's the murderer, obviously. But the person who kind of caused this entire story to happen, this game to happen, is fucking Kuno. <laughs> uh, which is also one of the better written characters of the year. That, the nightmare that he is. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob once, just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, thud. She shakes her head. So I called you. I hope, with all my heart, it's not the last thing I do in, Reva in Revachol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could it could not hath been a lie. That is impossible. Oh god, that was a lie too. Who made the call then? What if volition's wrong? <laughs> what if volition's the only sense that is wrong? Except the, the other senses have practically admitted that they're at fault in some way. I don't know. No, I had to do a big crazy check for volition to figure out that everyone else was wrong. So I'm so Volition's probably right, right? Yeah, hold yourself together, keep your morale up. That was a big check, and I succeeded at it. For sane people, well-adjusted cops. I don't know. The fact that I had to pass a check for it, and Volition's not like 12 or something like that, where it'd be a concerningly unreliable stat, makes me think that it's probably right, and everyone else is fucked up right now. It's really funny that the stat that I have that's only a 4 is like trumping a bunch of stats that are way higher, like drama over here is a 9, interfacing is an 8, composure is a 7. I think some pretty high ones around here. When was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. It takes a drag. I told you, I'm a horrible girl. I told you things break around me. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene, it's right there. In her bedroom, inside? Yes. 
You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. I think we're done here for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke, just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um, the lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or, or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk, and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. That's definitely not what that is. Hmm. Drama legendary. <laughs> this guy won't budge. You have to wake multi-face up forcefully, forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. I'm pretty good at that. What does that one mean? Oh. In, in God's name, wake up. So I have plus three for manipulating your skill set, which means that I figured out that she was... That's, that's, that's a bonus for me doing the volition check before. The love that did him in and lied about making the call. So I've got like, I've like, I'm set. I can make drama. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Take it easy. Don't overcompensate with this course correction. Ask, ask questions first. Yes. Start at the top. Choose, uh, choose at the bottom. That's how we've always done it. No rush. Start at the top, choose at the bottom. They're talking about the fucking interface of the dialogue. <laughs> See? How's rhetoric doing, though? Have we cracked rhetoric free? Because I never had to do a check for rhetoric. I've only done volition and drama. So now I can trust volition and drama at least. This is <laughs> the strangest. <laughs> this is what, what it, this is how you do a dialogue boss fight almost, isn't it? Without doing some sort of weird, silly mini games all the way through. Hmm. You know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. I did. She takes a step forward. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. Wow, what a what a convenient number that everyone anyone can just rattle off. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergency desk's number. Anyone could know that, sire. By looking around and calling the desk, I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. The lieutenant nods in your direction. It checks out. Hmm. It does check out. So that means if, if she... Yeah. This is an iffy response. Anyone can know the number and that someone coughed. Well, it more means that, like, she specifically knows when the call happened on top of who received the call and what the number was. Those details are pretty normal, but the time of the call exactly is information that she shouldn't have unless she either made the call or she was, like in the room with the person who made the call, or the person who made the call coached her on when she, they made the call, which is confusing in why it would happen. Say nothing. She stands before you, holding her back very straight. Your real name isn't Clashe Amando. I agree. The lieutenant turns to you. You wouldn't give us your real name. Not when people are after you. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly. Like there's a garrote around her neck. Okay, what? Okay. It's not. I knew it. You log your work every week. 
It's all transmitted to Kamisu. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie. All the time. She looks at her hands, her fingernails, a chipped white. I'm so tired of it. Hmm. Just sort of thinking about this. Because, like, there's a moral choice being made, essentially, in your choice to get her name or not. Because by getting her name, it gets entered into the books, and then you f and then you find out who she is, and then people come after her. So it's dangerous, unless everything she says is a lie. That's where things get complicated, because it's possible that she killed him, and she is a flight risk. Although she sure stuck her around while we were, like, inspecting this whole situation. You'd think she would just go anywhere else if she was the... the, uh, murderer. Instead of sticking around when she knows the cops are here. Literally, sli like, sleeping in the room next to them. Enough. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever's next. Let's change the subject for the time being. She slowly, slowly, lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. You. Are. This is not the end of this. Let's get back to those lies you told. Lies, I... He repeats, then trails off. It's unclear what she intended to say. Yes, we demand she be punished for deceiving us. We demand her anxiety. We demand her fear. No. Let's return to this later. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate political opinions somewhere in Martinez. Did I... what do you mean that I keep saying none of the above? Did I just get some new... oh. I got my fourth in-between point somehow. Which one... when, even? From that conversation? Which part did that come up in? Huh. <laughs> I've, I've been focusing on so many other things and I'm not even thinking about that as much. So that's curious. You must be mistaken, I'm a real radical. Of course, a radical centrist. In these bright and loud times where a thousand frequencies drown one another out, sober thinking is a radical act. Ew. It's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. First, where is the kingdom of conscience? It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring about those circumstances? Incrementally. Ugh. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Dye. D.A. something, maybe. She recognized that progress is meaningless if, it ga if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. But what about all the things that are actually wrong now? Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren might not. But that's no excuse to not to keep working. What sang Freud? 
What benevolence. Saying Freud, that's the wolf game. Composure or coolness, sometimes excessive as shown in danger or under trying circumstances. So composure and volition are all like, oh man, I love, I love this goddamn centrism. Ah, oh, it's so composed, so good. I misread it because saying Freud sounds like a not good word. <laughs> so I was like, ah, what's saying Freud? Like he's like, grumble, grumble, grumble. grumble. But no, he's like, but he's like, ah, oh, what's saying Freud? Because like saying Freud is like the that's like the ideal of composure, the peak of all that composure wants to achieve as an entity is saying Freud, and volition would want benevolence. So they're all like, oh my god, oh I love it. Ugh. Wait, is the kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? This is a false, this is a false dichotomy. You can't just like create that like, well, what if the worst thing ever happened instead of the status quo? See, that means the status quo is better. I'm just going to say no out of spite because it's my own brain. And I can say anything. Then you've never lived through real chaos. You're not real. I can, I can pick spiteful answers against you. Sometimes in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. Okay, but what's the kingdom of conscience actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend, and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national, and also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Man, that sounds kind of terrible. <laughs> Got weird. I'm like, post-capitalist, post-national. Like, All right, we're off to a good start. Post-ideological? What does even post-sexual... What do these even mean? Why? <laughs> Why is that even the goal? Eh, sounds kind of terrible. I don't think I want to be a moralist anymore. What you want is immaterial. The kingdom of conscience is coming, whether you like it or not. Only very slowly. Well, I hope it's slower than, you know, the part where the fucking void consumes us. Which is happening, by the way. I, so I guess you'll get- yeah, I guess they'll get their wish one day. One, one day we'll be post-everything, because the fucking void or whatever it's called, the, the pale, will consume all of existence. Hooray! Yes? Are we going to talk about the boots I'm wearing? Okay, let's talk about it. You stole the boots. He looks at the gleaming technological footwear you're sporting. <coughs> Congratulations. That must have taken an enormous, concentrated effort. Considerable ingenuity and timing. Now I'm going to report you and you're going to jail. Lie! Lie to get out of it! You're joking. Am I? He arches his brow. Anyway, did you want something about related to police work? Nothing. <laughs> it's just like the spinners he took. He can't pretend. I think that's why they put that detail in the game. One, you need to be able to pay for your first night. Two, uh, you kind of need an explanation for like why he would not report you for stealing stuff sometimes. You're not like assaulting people and taking shit from them in this game. Like you're just like, yoink. And a couple items. And it's like, well, he's the very character who confiscated those spinners. And he was more than happy to do not go to your room. Do not go to your room. Do not go to your room. Whew. I've made it. All right, so we need to figure out who Rose is. I think it's time to wait for tomorrow, though. 
It's a, I think it's officially late enough at this point, and I really need to let Lieutenant Kitsuragi deal with the body. Because the idea is that he'll be gone for the rest of the day, and then he'll come back tomorrow. So I really need to get this going. I was I was trying to get it done before 21 o'clock because I thought that he might just vanish from my party around then. But I've, not only have, has he not done that, I've been able to like walk back and forth past his room with, and without triggering him taking off on me. What's oh yeah? Can you can this open yet? Still haven't opened this. Crab bar not strong enough. Minus 20. Uh. So the machine unplugged has become a plus two, but it's just not enough. I need some kind of super pry bar. It just isn't enough, otherwise. Let's bag him, Kim. Take him away. The lieutenant takes the body away. You, wor you work alone for the rest of the day. Alright. He takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands. I'll get the legs. Bag the corpse and drag it to the motor carriage. And I can basically go to sleep and hear my reptile brain complain again or something. And he's gone. Kim! I miss you. <laughs> Still looking to deal with Titus, but maybe tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. I'm getting stuff done all of a sudden. This is neat. Still working on every armor piece. <sighs> I have the chest piece, hands and gloves. What was that? The sound means something? I think this, it might be the sound of the fact that my morale went up by one. Affecting... Yep, it blinks over here when that happens. That's when my, when my morale goes up. I've got the chest piece, but like there's no leggings. But I still need legs. And a helm. So we're still missing two pieces. We've gotten pretty far. The further I go along the coastline, the more I might get. Hmm. Not as much talk as I was expecting with Kim, but at this point I've just been blatantly using it in front of him because I needed to establish my authority. And so, uh, at that point it's like, we gotta, we gotta acknowledge this, right? Like, I can't just pretend it's not happening the entire time. But he still seems, he seems most happy ignoring it. Fine booze, no. We're still working on the- wow, that's my oldest quest now, besides the booze one, that doesn't matter. Is, uh, the victim's armor number. Buy a fallen pants from Kuno. First I gotta get him to like me, which is hard. Also don't know if I want them anyway. I need to find somebody else who might know something about the tattoos. Which, I've been exhausting dialogue as I get it, so I don't really know who else I could ask about that. But good luck. Hmm. Secret passages, I'd love to. Gun, that's a problem. Things did get scarier a little bit. I mean, the lynching was already pretty bad, but now we know that somebody has been shot. And so on some level, you kind of might want to find that gun. <laughs> uh... Which is not fun to think about, because I don't want to deal with that guy's... I don't want to do, really do missions for the Union boss guy. But I do need the gun. 
We are pointing towards the idea that his group is not behind the murder, despite how it seemed like that might be the case. And if that's the case, then it might not be as much of a problem to work with him than I originally thought. Maybe. It just, it just seems like an issue. I don't know. He made me sit in an uncomfortable chair, what a dick. This thing still says I have to get my badge, which is not correct. I have to deal with her damn task now, it's too late. Which is why we're looking for the lady driver. I want to talk to the old soldier, but he's not around right now. Right, idiot. Doom Spiral's looking for a jacket somewhere. Interestingly, this guy was like, I will never leave my gear, but he's not here now. Maybe... Uh, he's probably in the cabin, actually, right? Yeah, most people vanish this time of day. Can I see him in here at night? Yep, all the same visuals we're used to seeing. Hey, Kim's not here to chastise me. And you're hanging out. I've cracked the code. The woman looks at nothing, her eyes closed and her lips moving. Girl child, you hear her say. Girl child, girl child. Hello? Huh? She comes to as if nothing happened before. What is it? What do you want? Alright, are you the lady driver? Did you could just call me a lady, Sheriff, eh? I was told of a woman driver, and you're the only woman here. I am not that either. Sheriff. Eh? Her smile dissipates. I've gone too far from it all to remember what is between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. So you're not the driver everyone's terrified of. I'm only terrifying to small children and those who used to know me. Yeah, it's not her, believe me. Why are you scary to the people who used to know you? Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. You said long haul, that's... The big ones. The tracts. There's no women and men there. It's all just... He hums along, as if to a track on repeat. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. You feel very cold suddenly, as if standing face to face with a terrifying adversary. Then the feeling dissipates, and all you see is an aging woman. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. Then who is the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other canoneers? Camioneers? Sniffing around. When I have my movies to go to. That's all I need to know, thanks. Oh, Sim. The woman stares at you, her mind elsewhere now, on other matters. Something in her is pulling towards some unknown rest state. She twitches like a sleep kick. You seem like a woman who knows a thing or two about drugs. What do I need drugs for, lawman? When I see, when I feel the great adversary, no drugs can compare. The adversary? Yes. There is a protagonista. 
He gestures to the intersection. And an adversario. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hall. The pale sounds like the drug to me. That's not really what I was getting at. Then what were you getting at? Maybe if she th thought you're corrupt? Everard sent me. Place a finger on the side of your nose and tap twice. Who the fuck is Everard? The union boss? Ah. Uh. And what do I care about the Union boss? He's not Gabriel. He's not Franconz Negro. He's not even Hermann El Gildo, the Hand. Okay, let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? Her shoulder bones crack as she shrugs. Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. You said earlier you don't know what cargo you're hauling. Could it be drugs? Just this month I made half a dozen trips to Sara Mariza to Grad on the U-41A. What do you think they take from Samariza to Grad, Laman? I don't know, that's why I'm asking you. It's diamonds, Laman. Obviously. She grins. If you had to guess, who do you think is smoking drugs around here? Easy. It's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. She squints across the square. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. <laughs> the only driver she knows exists. That's correct. There's no visibility of any of the others. I didn't ask you about diamonds, did I? I don't care about that. Diamonds are good for you, lawman. You should try them sometime. Make yourself pretty, like Eva Deshores. Okay, if you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music, or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and all the features of this world. It's a good palate cleanser, this jamboree. Or, I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think I know what's going on with you. Pale driver dialogue. Yeah. This is all the old dialogue. I just thought there might be something new because of my breakthrough with the pale, the South Highway thing. One last thing, you said we can just become vapor? Yes. No elaboration. Hmm. The motorway south, yep. That's how we got there. It takes all the people where they want to stay. They say, I have been away on a kind of holiday. She replies, silently. Yeah, that's how you lose her. 
But that's how you lose her in the first place, which we've done before. Not a lot going on there. Uh, nope. It was worth checking in to be sure. I think at this point, it's really just time for my character to take a nap. See if for the first time I might even get some real sleep or something going on here. Oh, but before that... Visual Calculus. We were supposed to revisit the... the scene. Should have done that before I sent Kim off. Just juggling a lot of things. Sometimes you skip past something a little bit. You're like, ah, shit. Everyone saw me make that mistake. What happened here? Foop. The golden light melts away into the blue, glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon-lit shapes, a man and a woman, on the single bed. A two-hearted spider. What position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March the 4th, and a shot has just been fired. <clears throat> That's an interesting screen. Three different hypothetical angles for the shot entering this window. I'm not sure any of those make sense. Based on the way that her, her the roof faces, how could any of them have come from up there? We're coming in through this window. It would have to come from this direction, which would make it this way. Not that way, right? That doesn't seem right that those are the places the sketch is considering. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Where does it come from? From the roof outside. Location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. Inspect the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Have a look at point A of the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions. All on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is a composite location. A prime. Most likely origin of points. Shouldn't there be gun residue outside? I don't think so, if the gun was far enough away. There could have been, when the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. So I'm, what, 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? 72%. With an antique weapon that fires military-grade ammunition, a Belgrave rifle, for example, there is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or perhaps kneeling for precision. That would explain why it only took them one shot. Wait, so they shot from the roof and then jumped off the roof or something? What if it was just her that shot him on the bed and she was never in the broom? The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside. In the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Could the shot have come from inside the room, a closer point? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire preposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Are there any arguments against A prime, the roof? None that you've found th thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could there have been another point of origin further away? 
That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes that possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Extrapolate the radius to include all of Martinez. I think this is explaining why the map is shaped the way it is. Because this is the cone, this is the whole area that explains the different places that the sniper shot could have come from, that the court, that the case is eventually about. Unless they did just shoot from the balcony. There's still places you need to investigate. According to your map of the district, the shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an inlet, an islet on the bay. Let's call it B prime. More precisely, B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet. I don't know if that's actually what they mean by prime. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't. Know, I, don't can't, I don't remember what to call hashes. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. Let's have a look at the boardwalk. 700 meters away. The likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he has a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At the distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. Land's End. 1.2 kilometers away. The least likely of these positions. Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it. Possibly from a tent? No, too far-fetched. The Islet. Video game mechanics scream that that would be the place where it is, because it's the hardest place to get to. I've, t I've already been there before and I've gone around that, but like this is like a location I have to figure out how to get to. Maybe even gain access to via other quest interactions so that's that's where you that's where I would guess if I was guessing enti entirely on a meta level and not the information given for the clues one kilometer away an unlikely point of origin beyond the dock somewhere on an islet in the bay of Martinez perhaps there are islets there badly charted as they may be The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window, between Rue de Saint Ghislaine 10 and 33A. Angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets is questionable. So the shot could have come from somewhere further out than the roof. It is possible that it came from B prime, the boardwalk. B double prime. I was right about that part. Land's end. Or B triple prime. The islet. That is what you call it. You can't know for sure until you investigate those locations. Well, now we have new objectives. The lieutenant would probably agree that in this situation it's best to be thorough. And there we have it. Alright, lieutenant. You and I are going to have a chat in the morning about exactly that, I believe.